Right. Now, I guess you got it here in Phoenix. If anyone, how many of you ever seen where I had that pictures drawn of the church ages? Raise up your hands. I guess. See how the Lord drawed them in the skies the other night? Just exactly the way it's drawn up there at the tabernacle. Perfectly, exactly the way that the Holy Spirit gave it by inspiration three years ago at the tabernacle. There it happened in the skies. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. The Holy Spirit first moved by inspiration. I draw them on the platform. Then he came down himself and made his vindication of it as the moon and the light going out, going out into this Lady of Sia age, going into total darkness again. And here he comes down and vindicates it on the moon just at the time that all the churches are going together in a consolidation of the Federation of Churches. Hallelujah. No wonder Isaiah said gross darkness is up on the earth, upon this people. I know it's unpopular to speak against organization, but that's the mark of the beast. That's the thing that's carrying us right into there, making an image of the beast. I don't say that for to be angry. I say that because it's truth, brother. The day will come when Phoenix will raise up, and maybe I'm gone on, but you'll know that that was thus saith the Lord. It is true. And how that the great Holy Spirit has vindicated those messages and foretold the things never to fail one time. And why do we grope on in darkness? Why don't people wake up before it's too late? One of these days, it'll be too late when you've already taken the mark and then there's no... There's nothing else you can do about it then. You'll be caught in that system that you're marked with that system. Why don't you come to Christ? Be filled with the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, His resurrecting power that can set you free and make you a candle that sets on the hill. No matter how dark it gets, say, well, why should we do it? The rest of them, listen, right now is the time to let it shine when it's the darkest. That's when light shines better. It's when it's in darkness. Amen. We must always let the light shine where it's dark. Prophets saying gross darkness to be upon this people, and it certainly is the truth. Now we find out what made the moon reflecting the light, God showing first on the blackboard, next by his own presence, then in the heavens he showed the sign, and then out of Rome went the Pope. Over into Palestine, which to the ordinary eye, people screamed and fell on their faces and worshipped the man. Not anymore against him and I would be a minister that would join up with such. It's all the same spirit. It seems like the gross darkness is settled upon the people till they think that the only thing there is to do is to go to church and be a pretty good person, put your name on the book, and some little mysterious thing, God will twist the key when you die and change that spirit in you to Him. You're mistaken. When you die, that spirit's on you. That's the way you'll forever be. And remember, the Pharisees, Sadducees, and so forth with very religious people. God is a jealous God. He's jealous and he wants his wife pure. He wants her a virgin, chaste, nothing in the world into her at all. All together his word, part of him. We must be a part of the word. Not a part of the creed, a part of the word. Not a part of the church, a part of the bride. Church is condemned, we know that. She goes to outer darkness. But the bride goes up. Now, if people could only wake up for a few moments and realize what the great thing is, it's pride that does that. It's people who, who wants to go like the rest of the world. You can't do that. You're not of the world. You think a woman laying in their casket and won't know where she had her hair, water dude, or whatever you want to call it? You think she'd pay attention to how she was dressed if she's laying in a casket or some man? They wouldn't do it. That's the reason today there's so much stuff that we have to copy after the neighbors or some Hollywood star or some fashion or something like that is because that we haven't died yet to Christ and His Word. Amen. What's the matter with the churches? We're in darkness, groping in darkness, 
said there would be gross darkness upon the people. Uh, gross darkness on the people. Now, what does it all mean? It means this, that when the world, what made the moon fade out was because that the, uh, the sun, the earth, got in the shadow of the sun that was reflecting itself on the earth. The world got in the shadow. That's what's the matter with the church. That's what's the matter with the Presbyterian, Methodist, Pentecostals. That's what's the matter with all of us. The world shuts out the light that we're supposed to be reflecting. Swings itself around and gets into it, and as they pass one another, it throws darkness over it. And the world has come into the church in the, in the name of denomination, the name of some creed, and we're religious and all this and all this, but yet it denies the resurrecting power of Christ to vindicate his word that's prophesied for this day. Amen. There can only be light through the word of God. We know that. God in the beginning said that there be light and there was light. Vindication of his word that he had spoken. <clears throat> Blackness, blacked out. The world got in line with the reflection of the sun to the moon and blacked it out. That's exactly what's happened in the natural or in the spiritual. As it happened in the natural, foreshadowed and told us that's exactly what's taking place. Now you see how that comes out at the end. Many of you young people, you won't have to get too old until you'll see it anyhow if you live three or four more years. The moon now, we are in the Lady Osea church age. In the Lady Osea church age of all of the other churches, the Lady Osea last lukewarm church age, Christ was on the outside of the church. Any Bible reader knows that, Revelation 3. He was on the outside of the church trying to get his way back in again. And never did say he got in. But as many as he loved, he rebuked and chastened. The message would rebuke and chasten those who he loved. Now it was knocking, trying to get in. Darkness, shut off. Exactly what's come to pass. The light that has been shining soon will absolutely be shut completely out. It'll all go in to form an image unto the beast. We know what that means. That's the end time. God in the beginning separated the light from the darkness. And that's again what God's doing. God separates the Light from dark. In the beginning he said, let there be light. Now remember, there can be no light outside of the Word of God. The very sun out there is the Word of God. Vindicated. There was gross darkness upon the earth. Fog and mist upon the earth. And God said, let there be light. Now what if no light come? They wouldn't do no good to speak. But when he said, let there be light, and light come into existence, vindicating that his word was right. That light we live by today. And the only light that we can have today in the church is God vindicating his light to this generation. Each generation was lauded. So much uh, happened in their days. We all know that. The prophets come on the scene. They, the word of the Lord came to them, understood it. Seer, the Old Testament means, that's one that the word is revealed to. And how they know it? Because he foreknows things that will come. Then the word of the Lord came to them, each age. Jesus said to John, about John, he was a bright and shining light for a while. Why? Isaiah, 712 years before he was born, said there's the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Malachi, the third chapter, said, Behold, I send my messenger before my face to prepare the way before me. See, he was that word being vindicated. The word that was promised for that day, he was a light because he was making come to pass the very word that God had spoke about him. And when Jesus came, John said, I must fade out now. He must come in view. And he was a light. All down through the ages, how God spoke of that hour coming. How did those clergymen fail to see it? How did they fail? How did those Pharisees and Sadducees fail to see? He said, search the scriptures. 
For in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they that testify of me. How did they fail to see it, brethren? Just because it had been prophesied that they would do it. And so is it today that gross darkness is coming upon the people, and here we are. God has lauded his word to be manifested this day. And it's the only light we have. And God's going to let somebody manifest that word. Somebody's going to do it. He promised it. And he works just exactly like he always did by it. He's never changed his pattern of work. He prophesies what will happen. Then he sends somebody down and vindicates that. And it goes over the head of millions. Because darkness covers the earth at that time. And people love darkness better than they do light. Because darkness has a lot of pleasure. I seen a Hollywood play not long ago. said, life begins as the sun goes down. That's when death begins. All these nightclubs and where they think they live in, they're dying. God is beginning separated the light from the darkness. He's always done that. What does he do? He presses, the, by the coming light, he presses the darkness to the other side of the earth. And that's exactly what's coming to pass now. It's just before day. The morning stars come out to hail the day coming. And the Holy Spirit showing its light. It's coming a time when the light and darkness will have to be separated one from the other. Church and its order will take the order of the day. And Christ and his light word promise will go in the rapture. That's the only thing that's left for him to do. It's a day. Today is the dawn of a new day for many who are looking for his coming. So many good, sincere people today. That's what burns our hearts. So many good, sincere people, like Mary and Joseph. They were coming from the feast, and they missed Jesus. Many people do that same thing. They're thinking, and he's with them. Now, I want to place this little light to you. To show you how infallible the Word of God is, we all here this afternoon who are Christians believe that Jesus Christ was God's Word manifested. We believe He was virgin born. He was a tabernacle in which Almighty God tabernacled in here on earth. Not just a prophet, not just an ordinary man, but God Himself manifested in the form of a man. He was Emmanuel, God with us. We believe that with all of our heart. And now, notice, when Martha or Mary, rather, and Joseph, thinking Jesus was with them. They were just perceiving he was with them, thinking it just must be all right. He's bound to be with us. But they were sadly mistaken. He wasn't. So many good people like that today. They think they see the hour approaching. They know something's fixing to happen. What do they do? They go and join church, thinking he's with them. They shake hands with a preacher, thinking that's all they have to do. He's with them. Confirmed or baptized a certain way. That's all they have to do. Thinking Jesus is with them. Brother and sister, just like Mary and Joseph of old, real sincere people, yet they are mistaken. Your life proves whether Jesus is with you or not. Amen. Your life shows where he's occupied here or whether he's still in his heavens or not. Whatever you are, the works that I do, should you do also. How could you have Christ in you and then the very spirit in you deny his word? Take up a creed instead. It can't do it. He would defeat himself by denying his own word. Just because somebody put a wrong interpretation to it, you've got a Bible you can read like anybody else. Be sincere. David said, put him always before your face. Know that when we're meeting this new year, we're meeting it in the power of the resurrection of Christ. He's always before me. I shall not be moved. Notice how infallible the word is. Mary and Joseph. Now to you, my dear Catholic friends, that said Mary was the mother of God. Mary wasn't even the mother of Jesus, let alone being the mother of God. How could she be? Not one time did he ever address her as mother. Not at all. They come to him one time and said, your mother and brothers wait outside. He looked on his congregation and said, who is my mother? Who is my brother? Looked to his disciples and said, the ones that does the will of my father, that's the same as my mother. On the cross when he was dying, he also spoke the same thing. He said to John, John, hear this man, son, behold your mother. Not mother, behold thy son. Woman, behold your son. Amen. Not, she was no mother of God. She was just a barred womb that God used. Amen. 
no more than any other woman that God take an ocean to use. He might use your, the womb of your heart to declare his son if you, if you just let him do it. See, not no mother of God. There'd have to be a sensation even be a seed of Mary. It wasn't even a seed from Mary. It was the whole thing was God the Creator. If the first Adam back there was created without father and mother, the second Adam was the same thing. And anything less than that wouldn't put him on the equal with him. That's right. The same God created a body that he himself dwelt in. Now we find, look how, look, if Mary was the mother of God, how she slipped up there. She said, Thy father and I have sought thee with tears. Denying the virgin birth. Thy father, Joseph, and I have sought thee. What's that 12-year-old boy? 12-year-old child saying, Don't you know that I must be about my father's business? Debating with them denominations up there? <laughs> Not if written about Joseph's business, he'd been down the carpenter shop. Joseph wasn't his father. God was his father. Hallelujah. Don't you know I want to be about my father's business? Up there, 12 years old, with them learned priests. Not a day in school, but yet they were astonished at the wisdom. And look at the, he was the Word. Amen. When he was born, he was the Word. Amen. He is still the Word. Amen. Notice the Word will not take counterfeit. She said, thy father and I have sought thee with tears. Said, don't you know that I must be about my father's business? Rebuked his own mother while he was the Word. There would be a question in somebody's mind if Mary here who once said the Holy Ghost overshadowed and brought forth the Son and then here calling Joseph the Father. The Word's infallible. Amen. It can't fail. You know not that I ought to be about my Father's business. And he was about the Father's business. Not, not Joseph's business making doors and, and carpenter things. He was about his Father's business straightening out the religious politics he had in that day. Amen. Know you not that I must be about my Father's business. Yes, sir. Many people today and a lot of these fine churches are going into that council of church. Not going in, they're already there. Amen. They're perceiving it. That's just exactly the thing to do. Yes. Friendly, nice. Why can't we all come together? Well, they've been trying all for years to make all Methodist, Baptists, and all Baptist, Presbyterian, Pentecostals just try to make all of them Pentecostals. You can't do that, but a council is the answer for you. That's the answer what the Bible says they will do. Yes. And that's just exactly what they've done. Friendly churches. Yes, sir. A get-together. Fine. Let's have fellowship. The Bible says, how can two walk together lest they be agreed? Amen. Some of them deny the virgin birth. Eighty percent of the Protestant churches deny the virgin birth. Amen. And they deny the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They deny the signs of His coming. The resurrection power. They deny He's the same yesterday and forever. How can you, when God... Put all this chaos in the world because a woman one day doubted one little phase of his word. Amen. Satan told her the truth, all but one thing. But that was the thing that caused all the trouble. Now, all this heartache and sadness he had to look at because one little phase of it was doubt. You think one little phase of doubt will ever take us in? That's the reason Jesus is coming for a chaste virgin. Pure! Deal with the Holy Ghost in Not of the world, but of the power of God. Oh, how wonderful to know that there is a possibility to get into this group. How do you do it? You'll never do it by joining an organization. You'll do it when you're baptized by the Holy Spirit in the mystical body of Jesus Christ. Raised with Him in resurrection, free from death and sin. That's the only way. Darkness. Great denominations. A great group of men gets together and sets their ideas about it. And that throws you right back into a twist like it was at the beginning. No hopes at all in that case. You're simply gone. And all of them they seem to be so uh, stirred up about this friendly churches. Think that God will be with them. Where the millenniums go to start when the council all gets together up there and all the economical moves and so forth. And they join in. What are they doing? Making an image into the beast. A power that we're all the undenominations and so forth that won't join in with them will be shut out. Let's watch and see if that happens. I've got it wrote down here the very day we, uh, the Lord let me see that in 1933. And here it is just exactly the way it, way it said, Amen. just coming the same way, how the Pope would leave Rome and so forth. Now, there are good people, but mistaken. Joseph and Mary was fine people. 
but real mistaken. But what was it God used a 12-year-old boy to show that that word has to stay pure? Exactly what it was. What it said in the first place. He was virgin born. And that's what he was. Thinking he was with them when they joined the churches and so forth, but it wasn't. Now, but to the elected, now that's a darkness and I can stay on that for another hour. But to the elected, precious, and called saints of God, I say to you this coming year, Shalom, God's peace. The hour is here. If I could have been back there before the days that the world was created and looked down and seen the whole thing and the Father had said to me, what day would you want to live? I'd say, now, right now. Amen. This is the hour. This is the greatest hour that the church has ever moved into. Just before the coming of the bridegroom, all the real church of the living God ought to be on fire, burning with the light of the gospel being vindicated among them. Rise and shine for the lights come to you. The light of this day. Isaiah was the light of his day. Noah was the light of his day. Why, he had the word manifested. And the gospel, the Bible, words for this day is the light of the day. What a glorious time that we're living. Now, good morning, me. Peace. Darkness is gathered. What's it gathering for? To show the light. Isaiah 16, 1. Rise and shine for the light is come to you. That's the reason I say shalom. The light is come to you. God's peace to the elected woman, to the elected lady. Those who God before the foundation of the world called out and ordained to that. The rest of them will never see it. They'll never know nothing about it. The Bible said so. Jesus said, no man will come to me except my Father draws him first, and all the Father has given me will come. That's there stood Judas, light shining up here, but back in his heart was dark sea. When the showdown come, the darkness showed. Here was the little woman all blacked out up here in front, but down here was a predestinated seed. And when the light come, it scattered the darkness and it showed forth. We know Messiah's coming in. He does. He'll show us these things. Jesus said, I am he. But Judas doubted it, yet supposed to be walking in the light. See, the light up here doesn't matter. It's the light down here that counts. The light up here, a walk and fellowship and everything else. But when the real power of God comes in, it can't come back to this dead seed. It'll reflect off in the denomination. But when it's back down here, a genuine predestinated seed, when that light comes down here, it shows all the darkness away from you and puts you in fellowship with Christ. He was the one who gave you the life before the foundation of the world. Otherwise, you'll never see it. But God said, now to you predestinated seed, shalom. Amen. God's peace rests up on you because we're near the end now. We're right down near the end. We're going to talk about that group for a while. Shalom. God's light has come. The word light is vindicated again so that you can see the manifestations of the promise of God for this day. Search the scriptures. In them you think you have eternal life. They testify of the day that we're living in. What is the light of the day? What did the Bible promise for this day? See what hour it is. No wonder that Jesus rebuked him for not believing John. He was the light because the prophet said he would come. And there he was, the manifested light. They didn't see it. They didn't understand it. They thought he was the Messiah. And they thought something else and this and other. They failed to see it. Jesus, come on, two lights can't shine at the same time. There can't be a church light and God's light shining at the same time. It's got to be God's light puts out the church light. That's exactly what's taking place today. God's separating churchism from his light of the promised word of this hour that we're living in. That's the truth, friend. You might not want to believe that, but you just wait and find out if it's so or not. Don't wait. You better get in right now while there is a chance to get in. The word is light when it's vindicated. Until the word is promised for the day is vindicated, then it is not light. It cannot be. If God said, let there be light, no sun come into existence, there's no sign of light. But when God said, let there be light, and there was light. When God promised the Messiah, the Messiah come, then his word was fulfilled, and he was the light of the hour. When he promised Noah, and he promised the others, and all down, they was the light of the hour. And there's a light of the hour today. That's Jesus Christ and the power of his resurrection. 
His word that promised for this day, the works that I do shall you also greater than this shall you do for I go to the Father. Greater works. Amen. Greater things than he did. You believe it? Amen. I believe it. Amen. It seems humble. It seems like it goes over the top of people's head. Look, when he was sure on earth, how could you do greater works? I've translated that many times. More. But the same thing. Greater, he said in St. John 14, 12. Greater works than this shall you do. Did you notice? When he went to make water into wine, he took water first, the already created substance, and turned it into wine. When he fed 5,000 people, he took a fish that once swam in the water, broke it, handed it out, and multiplied creation. He took bread that was once sweet, baked into bread, broke it and hung it out. To the, handed out to the people and it returned back again multiplied creation but in the last days Amen. where there is no sign of creation he speaks it into creation anyhow Amen. shows that he's the same God that was in the beginning he can create squirrels he can create whatever he wants to because he's God greater things than this will you do for I go unto my father the word's infallible it has to be manifested it has to be fulfilled Greater than this shall you do. Amen. Not multiplying, but speaking out into creation. Amen. Notice at the word now, when he promised, what were we at then? What day are we living in? What is the hour? The manifesting of the word of God, like it is in all hours. You got the message on the seven church ages? Watch exactly how each one of those beasts that went out and the beasts that followed him. Watch exactly if it didn't hit down to the reformer's age and every age, just exactly the way it was supposed to be. Exactly what the Word said. And so will the Holy Spirit manifest today just exactly what the Bible said it would be. Amen. We see the shadowing in the heavens and on earth and all the things and the councils and things getting ready. And we see in the midst of all that the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ promised for this day. Manifesting itself. We're living in a wonderful time. Shalom. To you who have... The word down in your heart chose before the foundation of the world to hear the word for this day. You don't? It's a bad year for you ahead. If you are, it's a great world for you ahead, a great day, great year coming. Now, New Year. Not to turn a new page. A lot of people try to turn a new page on New Year. Turn it back the next day. Like a little story I was reading the other morning. A woman hollered into her husband who'd got up early and went out and got the morning paper and was reading the morning paper. He said, she said, is there anything new in the news? He said, no, just the same thing, only different people. That's about the way it is today. Same thing, we got a new organization, same old doctrine. Just pet it around, somebody got a little phase of it going this way, that way. This is a new day! Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. This is a day that we should rise and shine in the power of Jesus Christ. Gross darkness settling up on the earth. There should be a new day for us. Yes, indeed. Doing it just the way he does it. But turn to his word and see the promise that's promised for this day. And you'll know where you're living in daylight or not. Changing the calendar doesn't change the time. It only changes the calendar. Now closely listen. Do as David did. Put your future in his hand. I'm, what am I know what to do, Brother Branham? Put your future in His hand. No matter what comes or goes, trust Him. He is the Word. Now, I know. David said, His time is in my hand. Trust in Him all the time. Always trust in Him. He knew who helped the future, David did. That's the reason he could say this. There's only one who holds the future. That's God. So you hold the, the future, let him hold you. All right. Some people said, but Brother Branham, I have tried, and I have tried. Well, wait a minute. Patience is virtue. Patience is Holy Spirit virtue. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You say, how can I wait any longer? Just keep on waiting. When you've done all you can do to stand, then stand is stand. How am I going to do it? Stand. He said it's the truth and it's the truth. He said it'll happen. How? I don't know, but it'll happen. He said so. He promised it. If he promised it, it's going to happen. That's all. It can't waste. So now just remember, God took thousands of years to fulfill his promise of a coming Savior. 
4,000 years, God took to fulfill that promise. But he knew from the beginning just when it was going to happen. He knew no one else did. He just said it would happen. And when it happened, the people was in such a delusion till they didn't know to how to accept it. If that same thing hasn't repeated again, it always does. It never fails both sides. Always. What did he do during these years? He showed types of him coming. He showed it in Joseph. If you look at Joseph's life, hated of his brothers, loved of his father. Why? Because he was spiritual. Because he saw visions. The rest of them didn't see visions. They were patriarchs. But they didn't see visions, interpret dreams. But they were jealous of him. And he was sold almost for 30 pieces of silver, raised up out of the ditch where he's supposed to be killed, set at the right hand of Pharaoh, and when he left the throne, the trumpet sounded, bow the knee, Joseph is coming, just exactly what Jesus was done. Set to the right hand of God, and when he leaves the throne, the trumpet shall sound, and every knee shall bow and confess to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Exactly, he showed it in types of David when he's up on the... A rejected king looking over Jerusalem, weeping, how often would I have heard you as a hen would have brewed, but you would not. Down through the age, he showed it in types, knowing that someday the last type would be fulfilled. And the full manifestation of his promised Messiah would be there. And when the full promise comes, though he typed it, day after day, year after year, he typed it. And when it comes to the reality... They didn't believe it. Amen. He's done the same thing. Yes. Typed it and showed it in the church ages and everything to the hour that we're living. Yes. Right. And people are in gross darkness. Right. Seems like they just can't comprehend it. Such a sad thing. No more than see the young man out here, fine, big, fine, built fellow with his hair, uh, what is Curled up like the women do, and leg of tarts on, and a big long sweater hanging down, purple shoes on. Masculine. Oh, my. What a horrible thing to call a man. Amen. Amen. What a thing to call a man. That's right. See some woman, supposed to be Danish and loving, come out with a pair of man's trousers on, a cigarette in her mouth, and bobbed hair. What a thing to call a woman. Jesus called Mary, woman. Shouldn't even call that just a female. Notice. An hour. Why? Sometimes people who claim and think they're sincere, but a gross darkness has got them in this. The Bible said it would be like that. Read Isaiah 6 and find out if the women wasn't to do that way in the last days. Just exactly if what the Bible said they would be. It's the Word of God. Jeremiah and different ones spoke of this hour that we're now living because they seem to end from the beginning. So we see these things in gross darkness upon the people. Yes, it took God thousands of years showing types and everything. And finally, they did not know him when he come, though he was portrayed and Joseph and David and Elijah and all down through there he was portrayed with them. And yet we can't understand why they didn't see it. And there it was right in the scripture. Out of Bethlehem of Judea he would be born. They find it in the scriptures. How is he born a virgin? A virgin shall conceive and bear a child. They call his name Emmanuel. What did they kill him for? Because he made himself God. Amen. And he was God. Amen. Sure, they made him. He said he made himself God. Equal with God. Said, I'm a son of God. Well, he was. Amen. Bible said he should be called Counselor, Prince of Peace, the Mighty God. Amen. The everlasting Father. Wonderful. Amen. That's what he was. Why didn't he understand that? No wonder he said, you ought to search the scriptures. They said, we're Moses' disciples. said, if you was Moses' disciples, you'd know me. Moses wrote of me. And they didn't know it. And the hour is upon the people again when they'll go to their creeds and things instead of the lovely Jesus. That's right. These great big things come up and bring them right into more darkness, more darkness. And God declaring it in his word by signs and wonders in the heaven and showing forth telling things that happens just exactly to the hour and to the minute. What did take place? And then they continually walk right on the same way. Looks like they just can't help it. Good people. Yes, sir. Doing the same thing now as they did then. We are creatures of time. God is creatures of eternity. God is a creature of eternity. He never did begin. He never will end. So why not just commit yourself to him? Look up and shine with the joy of the light of God's word that's shining today. Why can't people see that, friends? Listen. 
I'm your brother. I love you. Wouldn't it be easy for me just to intolerate one and go ahead and say, oh, well, I compromise on this. I com-. I'm not made out of that. No, sir. When it's a word, it's a word. God, help us to stand for that thing which is true. Yes, sir. It would be fine. Sure, you get more pats on the back. But when I, when I do stand there that day, them bony fingers point in my face and say, you know better, but you fail to tell us. Who? Oh, I'll be like Paul. I'm not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Don't be yeah. a of Let it go where it may be. That's truth. God knows it. And he backs it up and says it's the truth. Yeah. Turn to what? To Brother Branham? You, you'd be foolish to do such a thing. Turn to Christ and he is the word. Yeah. Turn to Christ. Get away from creeds. Get back in there. I don't care. You might start in your creed 500 years ago. That, you're just, that don't mean one thing to God. Them Sadducees and Pharisees start along for